little bit. Ernesto Williams is a realist. All right, come on up, bro. As the owner of this 24-hour barbershop in Buckhead, he knows hard work pays off. I kind of like the challenge, challenge of things. But he's not too sure about luck. <laughs> in fact, he's never played the lottery. I guess it's just, I've never been excited about I think, it. I think it's a fluke, kind of like, you know? And at first, he told us $290 million might be too much money. A lot of money. It changes your friends, your attitudes, everything. Everybody changes when you get money. You get, you get kind of bored. And then you come out your mouth and say you'll be bored. <laughs> Customer Carvis Glover couldn't disagree more. Um, I pretty much play when it get high because it seems like it's, it's about that time for it to be. It's about to make the money off of us. And after talking with us, Ernesto started having second thoughts. He slipped next door and surprised us with this. This is my first ever. First one. So it's got to be good luck. First day of January. How you like that? At least this once, he'll take a chance and keep working hard. <laughs> Jennifer Leslie, 11 Live News. Every hood got their own hustlers. But this is the hustlers anthem. Hustle hard. Boss, boss, boss. 
I thought you were Big Nesto. No, this is the Big Nesto. Well, the Big Nesto is God of Stairs. I'm the second Nesto. This is number three, and this is number two. See a lot of people with barbershops, but he ain't not seen a 24 hour barbershop before that's running so successful by a black man. That's what he told me. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes you gotta, uh, first of all, you gotta believe in God, and believe in God, you can't believe in yourself. Because ain't nobody gonna believe in you but yourself and God. Believe that. And I just thought a lot of, I took, took a lot of thought, a lot of time when I'm locked up, thinking about it. You know, you and your sister and brother. I had a lot of time to myself. You know, I didn't, I didn't sit around, sit on the bunk, play cards, look at TV, like a lot of clowns do. Don't have a plan in the vision. They just sit up there and play games with their life. I got tired of playing with my life. I only stand in the of my future, so I had to start playing before I got out. So I pulled everything together. Put everything on paper, every day, every night. I got out, so I couldn't find any work. <clears throat> Did anybody help you when you started? No, you know how it go. Just sit on the bunk, tell them lies, talking about what they gonna do. Tell them what me and all the dreams, they got this and got that. And when you get out, you leave you on the bus stop. You know one dude, he left me on the bus stop. You know he say, next door, I got you, man. I got you when you get out. Got out, called him. Call him about three, four times. Had me sitting out there for four hours on the bus stop. That's why I called the bus stop. Selling me you no know, penitentiary game. And where your first spot was at? I started out there this morning. Stayed out there, old lady gave me a little chance. Old Debbie. Old Debbie Johnson, that was her name. That was me <laughs> Had a little game by herself, but I appreciate it because she gave me a little game. Hi there. <laughs> Hi there. Bitch, get out of all of that. It's a problem with a bitch, get out of there. Relax, don't care, let the bitch down the tail. That was so cool. You just dug the shop, it's 24 hours, brother. What's the, what's the longest shit do you think you ever pulled? Straight. Like, well, like without falling home, like home no shower, like straight grind. Uh, probably the longest. Bird bath. Probably the longest ship. Probably be a month. A month straight. No showers. <laughs> no sleep. A little bit of food. Straight grind. Nothing but haircuts all day. All night. Now, you ever had a barber <clears throat> that left you a spot and got their own spot? Uh. Yeah, I have one. Oh, Mr. James Kynes. Yeah. Yeah, he uh he opened a nice bob shop. Actually he opened up two. And he learned a mistake from the first one. And the first mistake that he made, can't believe in dreams. The dreams that other people say. And he paid a valuable lesson for that. One thing I do respect him for is he came back and said, hey Nesto, let's do this thing again, man. I need to start all over again. I respect that man for that. Now you got another barbershop. B. 
bigger and better. So sometimes you got to lose the game. And a lot of folks don't understand that rule of thumb of the game. You have to sacrifice and buy down and recognize and understand that <clears throat> that it's always not a loss. And sometimes, sometimes we, as, we as black men, we think that we let our ego get in the way. And our ego get in the way, it destroys every time. And he didn't let his ego get in the way. That's why I said respect. I'm proud of him, I'm very proud of him. Uh, actually, I met er Ernesto and I met each other spiritually before we even basically met each other physically. You know, one Sunday, uh, he visited a church that I was attending. And at the time, I was working uh, with the business management firm. I was the director of the sports division. And I just always think like, okay, I have to elevate myself. I have to elevate my game, what I need to do. So initially, I was thinking, you know, upgrade my car. I need a new car. And I was a Beamer person. I always liked Beamers. I always wanted one. And so when he pulled up, we actually parked right in front of each other at, our, at this church that I was attending. I was a member and he was visiting. And when I saw the car that he was in, I was like, wow, I like that car. He had some real nice sporty rims on the car, and it was a t it was very clean, but it was corporate, and it kind of fit what I felt like would have been my mold. And, um, I heard God say, "Turn in that shop," and I was like, "God, you need to find something for me to do, cause I ain't trying to stand no feet all day, trying to be in a barber shop all day." And I heard him again say, "Turn that barber shop right there." And so in the middle of the road, I basically got over, I busted a U-turn, and turned in, and I went and spoke with uh, Ernesto about an opportunity coming cut hair. One dude said, uh, remember that guy in first open up over there on Roswell? And he come beating on the door. Nesto, I know you in now. He saw my car out there backed up. I know you in now. What kind of car was it? Yeah, one of them old SLs. Front. You know how they do when they get a little car. What you had? I had a cell. But I had something to let everybody know I wasn't playing no games. My car is a trophy. My car is not a lucky thing to sit around and play with women with. That would a guy get the game twisted here. That's a luxury. A luxury as a, as a trophy that you work on. It's a product of Ernesto Cuts. The real deal. This is that trophy I was telling y'all about. Butler tie. Ooh, this thing is hard. Butler tie. Ernesto Cuts is going into the new, is going to the new barbershop. <laughs> but anyway, that's what gave me an idea. I'm like, that's what I know you're in now. I see you up in here. I'm sleeping on the floor. This is my shop. You're going to make money because I believe in it. You have no investors because all the investors are scared. Because investors don't believe in you like that. You got to believe in yourself. That's the only way you're going to make it. How long is that been up? Well, we're currently been now seven years. It's time to retire over there. It's time to go to the next level. Which is. 18 with a mobile ball shot. so I can go ahead on the NASCAR. I want uh, Ernesto Pitts to take it to the next level. I need to get on up in there with the big boys. For real. What's the big boys here? NASCAR. <laughs> That's the big boys, NASCAR. Ain't nothing no bigger than that. I mean, they're bigger than in, in NFL. Them boys get it. I just want to see, can I do it? That's all. I mean, if I ain't never one day, I'm good. I just want to make sure I, I made it. You know what I'm saying? Because it came with a thought. Came with a thought. Well, I send my shouts out to it. 25 Barbershop does a great job. <laughs> if you notice, you can look amongst all of the walls that Richie has. Three great big walls. Great pictures of great guys and ladies that have been through the 25 Barbershop. ATL stand up. We put it down all day, 24 hours, 365. All year long, baby. I just happened to be riding along the street one day and seen this on the main strip, Peace Street. This is the ATL, baby, where everything happened. If it's happening, it's happening on Peace Street. So the dead man said, 
Have you ever been inside? I know you got the moguls and the barbershop stuff at the same time to do the beauty salon. How is that going to work out for you? Well, the beauty salon is going to run great because I have a, a vision in mind to protect the women. See, there's a lot of beauty salons out here not take, taking the time and thinking about the women are spending all that money, the weaves, the color, you know what I'm saying? They ain't, they ain't really taking time to looking at the security. They're not looking at, you know, okay, if this lady's spending $500 for a weave, a weave and a half, okay, well guess what? Take the time out to have somebody cater and walk her to the door, or take the time to have somebody to go pick her up. You know what I'm saying? Take the time and say thank you. They don't even say thank you, they just say, oh, this girl come to get her hot done. You know, I don't feel like messing with her because she ain't such, 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 but she pay her. No, I want a woman to feel like a woman that she going to get all this stuff done to her for what? For somebody to look at her and give her some attention. And she still ain't getting the proper attention that she needs. You know what I'm saying? So you feel like your spot to be where they can get the proper attention at? Most definitely. Why is that? Because for one thing, I, got, I, I can't do it all by myself, but I can start with me to be able to understand that our uh, African American black women that's out here done tuck over and our black men done lay down. You know what I'm saying? And it is it is still some good black men out here. You know? But they just ain't getting a chance. The reason they getting a chance because they get beat down so much because of the suckers. The suckers is laying down. You know what I'm saying? You got women taking these men off the street and fixing them up. What's the definition of a sucker to you? Uh, I'll fix them up, I'll fix them up, Negro. <laughs> you know what a fix them up, Negro is? No. Uh, 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 i fix them up, Negro, run around here on the side of the road trying to figure out where you going with a pan hanging down. No game, but he talking about his gangster. You said, say that again, you uh, said he, he walking around, walking around in circles, out there in the middle of the street with his pants down, trying to figure out where he going, talking about he a man. He wolf up to the girl say, hey, uh, you gotta pay some bills over here now, you know. No, I ain't paying no bills there because I ain't got no job and, and start making these excuses and make these women feel like, you know, they the fault. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Still stand up. Because the way I grew up, the way I grew up, I mean, your aunt, uncle, your nephew, or whoever bigger than you, they'll knock you down, make you feel like a man. And you're number 10. But now, get on that sit down. Uh, uh, you heard me. Don't hurt my baby. You see what I'm talking about? You can't even chest talk. You can't make a man out no man. Now I'm telling you what. Oh, 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 you hurt my baby. I'm going to call the police on you because you hurt my baby. Then as soon as you get 15, you start putting that gap out on you. Then you be like, uh, uh. So that's what I'm saying. Then me and my age, they ain't nowhere to be found. And I'm calling them all out. You know what I call them out? That they scared of the young boy. See, I ain't scared of them. They scared of the young boy because the young boy get loud on them. You know what I'm saying? Pop, what you looking at? Pull the gag out. I pull the gag out too. But so I don't go take it to him like that. Talk to him like a man. That's the difference. And that's what these women out here got to understand. To be able to start talking to these men and nurture them because that's what the women here for. To nurture a man after he get through hunt. He clowns on them. He ain't out of hunt no more. The women are out hunting now. So get what I feel. With my salon, I could say, okay, I could at least have a little chat set. I ain't got to, I ain't got to charge to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Make a woman think, okay, you know, you're right. You're right, Nestor. Not, not if a dude go out and get the hustle and he get locked up and she go to the next man because she need her bills paid. That, that ain't no woman. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if a woman believes in you, she going to believe in you. But, it's sad, man. I don't even want to talk. Go ahead on, bro. Let's talk about something about it. They ain't, they ain't talking about that. What, what else? What else you want to know? What else? That you've been in the game for over 10 years. How many shops have you seen that's really getting to it? That's really cutting, not spray painting, not penciling everything. Yeah, it's really getting to it. Other than yours. Uh. I, I, I don't want to give me proud, but I ain't no hater. I ain't no hater. And, and he might hit on me, but I don't care. But I'm a different gangster, so I don't, I don't really care. But uh, 
Oh, good fellas. I'm proud of him because me and him bumped our heads one or two times. But I would take my hats off to Ron because he used his head. First of all, when I first got out, I seen them old Mexicans out there. I'm out there riding the bus and seeing them Mexicans out there load up at the, at the uh, QT. I said, man, why don't these Mexicans come front? You know, when I'm gone, it wasn't no Mexicans in the line like that. When I came back, that's all I seen. I ain't seen no black people standing out there trying to get no work. Well, yeah, you was gone. I'm gone in uh, the early part of the 90s. We were loaded in. The bitter baby. Well, yeah, you came back. Came back in 99. That when everybody talking about the world going in. That's when they talking about the uh, computer from the crash and all that. Yeah, the world in it all right. The world changed. Changed a whole lot when I came back. Seen a lot of nothing going on. But I seen something going on. I seen them Mexicans sitting out there uh, that QT. I said to myself, I ain't gonna never let them Mexican out hurt me. I ain't had no problem with it, but you know, I guess I was like, man, I ain't understand what they had going on. It was coming up. We were falling every day. All we were doing was killing each other. Killing each other's spirit and our dream. You still care? Yeah, I'm gonna have time to time, you know, to keep my, my skills polished up. Who are that you cut? Uh, what you mean, who are all I cut? If I yeah, had, like, who, who, who are you cut? Like. <laughs> I can't believe you asked me that. I mean, I just, hey, I just want to know. I mean, some people out here faking saying I cut this person, that person. I mean, I know you ain't no flexor, so I'm asking you. Who yeah, you, you, cut? you know who my favorite person that I cut? Out of all these years that I've been cutting half, a little bit fucking Out of all these years I've been cutting half. Now, I'll take that back. There's two people. There's really two people that I really got something from. One. When I was doing my time, I used to uh, cut out there on the baseball field. When all the mother barbers wouldn't let me get in the barber shop, so I had to cut out in the baseball field. With a razor and comb, never forget. And uh, his name was uh, Andre Wade. He gave me a chance. He said, man, don't bump me up now. We're going to get the fight now here in the yard out here. And that was funny to me, but we did get to fight, though. <laughs> we did get to fighting at the end of the day, but uh, we've been friends for about 17 years now. And my next person, the favorite person is that I've been cutting, is Jasper Williams. That's my favorite uh, client that I've learned a lot from. Older gentleman, pastor. I say him because I cut his hair, just that you know, he has that wisdom and that knowledge, you know, that I would like to one day pass on to a young man my age. I ain't really young, young, but I'm all right. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody having me cut because without them, without the people, I can't be nothing. For real, for real. So this is the only side of town that you really, really, if you had to move your spot, that you'll stay in, the area? Or would you pick another area? Be 24 hour wise. Nah, this is the only spot at the work in. This is the only spot at the work in. Why do you feel like this is the only spot at the work in? Well, it's the way the sun set. A lot of people don't understand the way the sun the way the sun come up, the way the sun set, from the morning to the afternoon to the evening. You can see where the traffic road. You can see where the, where the angels come in, and you can see when the devil come out. So, I mean, you know, for real, for real, think about it. Uh, most people that live in the suburbs, they go home and go sleep, take care of their kids. Let me start asking out a question. Enlighten me on some areas. Let me know what you got going on. Like what? As in, since the whole time you was gone, what you thought about? 
But I thought from, about from, from way from the early nineties when you said you first left, not the two thousand, the early nineties. Well, one thing about it is I figured I ain't gonna never let them folk trick me again. And that's what most of they do, they trick all the, the folks who don't have the education to educate themselves. That's one thing. Second of all, uh, once I realized that I was tricked, I just sit down and just said, listen, man, I'm just gonna give it all to God and just ask him to just please help me through everything I was going through while I was gone. The only thing kept me going for the whole time but thinking about you and the sister and brother now, how I'm going to make y'all proud, how I'm going to make y'all to be able to understand a legacy that I can help build and we can maintain it together for years like the others do. And I just want to be different, be the best father I can be when I came back out to be able to educate y'all. That's, that's basically what I was thinking about. That's what kept me going the whole time. No matter what, nobody else. I'm listening. That's it. I mean, I really kept to myself. I was just really trying to seek knowledge from the older guys, you know, who had life experience waiting for me, who had life sentences that, that were willing to share. The things they would do, if they had a chance to do it all over again. And I just took advantage of that. That's so all. I just humbled myself. I didn't want to. I was foolish. Just like every other young guy was foolish. But I just, I guess God just put his hands on me. And gave me that opportunity to understand life. Well, that's it. And like I said, I really thank God for what he has done for me. It ain't about all the material things, the money, the women. It ain't really all about all that. What it's about is how you can save somebody's life without making mistakes you don't make. So that's why I be cutting up and I see you be doing this stuff. You be know, just being mean or I'm hating on you, as you say. When you're gone, when you're away from your family and your holidays go past and you see all this stuff on TV, you start like, man, I wish I could be here with my fans, I could be doing this and that. We, we don't take advantage of all that stuff when we're out. We're free. So by me taking advantage of uh, thinking about what I could be doing positive in my life to stay out here with y'all, that just motivated me. You're priceless. You can't find you every day. I'm priceless all day long. <laughs> 24 hour barbershop, I don't slip in here weeks at a time. Not just, oh, I'm up. Yeah, I take a nap, you know. I ain't never fell asleep in between the cuts, so 24 hours meaning, you know really get 24 hour money, not sleeping on this money. You understand? You understand me? You know, my daddy being a person that he is so busy to be his age, it doesn't seem like he's gonna be retiring until he's about 80, 90, maybe even 100. But with that being said, yeah, I wouldn't mind taking over, but I can't see myself taking over with the way that he moves. He moves too swift-like. Well, I don't really, I don't, I really don't mean try to think about retirement because I'm a busy man. I love to be busy, I like to be active. To me, when you feel that you need to retire, you might as well be dead. Because guess what? You're no, no longer useful in the world. To me, the way I feel, the way I am, to be 46, if I can't get my mind active, my body and soul active, I'm no good to live by. At all. You should feel the same way. You can't help nobody. You can't, can't make your mind go real broad out there. You can try to 
better yourself, even more, because it's all this stuff you, you live for, it really dangerous, for real, for real. I don't care if it's, it's a cracker, you want it. You know what I'm saying? So what you're saying that you always got to be active, and you're saying that you build your shop yourself? Well, I feel it myself with my mind first. See, you gotta have, you got to become a thought first. If you don't have a thought, that's what I'm saying. If, you, if your mind and your body and soul is not moving, you can't think of that. That's why I'm always moving. You know, you already about to be saying, that's why you move too fast. If I don't move too fast, you move too slow. You can't keep up. Trying to walk in his footsteps. I couldn't do that because there's only one Nesto, one Ernesto, and put like that. It's only one person like that, one of a kind. There ain't too many people you're gonna find that can do that. Son, not son, brother, sister, twin, cousin, auntie, uncle, even his daddy. Can't nobody move how he move. But with that being said, I wouldn't mind taking over though. I just wouldn't want nobody to look at it as that. Oh, he's not doing it like that stuff. He's trying to be that stuff because I can't try to be nobody but me. Memorable experience, I have to say, I don't know if I could pinpoint it down to one, but for the sake of the interview, um, I was surprised when I seen a lot of different celebrities coming through this this, this spot. I really like that. Well, I mean, you know, I, I got MVP last week, but I definitely, I'm not going to say I'm the best, you know. Uh, I put it like this. A Nesto 24-hour cuts, we got a strong five. Any barbershop in the city, y'all want to set up a, a nice uh, non-profit game or something, get your five and come see us. Everybody wants to be a star, a star, a living star. the fast life and big dreams, life and big dreams. On, the on the cover of a magazine, the empire, cause everybody wants to be a star, a star, a star, taking pictures everywhere, grand finale to it, make sure you have a bob shop, let y'all know when you're playing no game. How you doing, sir? Okay, sir. Perfect. Okay, you Perfect. 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 When I'm at ATL, this is where I be at, Chuck. This is my barber, Chuck. ATL. I ain't going nowhere in Atlanta but here. That's right. This is Mr. James Kind right here. See the good look out. Tell him what you all. We all to the nation. <laughs> 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 no, we have a... Uh, <laughs> we have a men's room allowed in spa. Uh, on Far Road, uh, King of Atlanta. We do everything from head to toe, men's room, hand to detail, massage, facial, any wardrobe consultation, the whole nine. It's, it's, a, it's a kingdom of women, is what we call it. This my brother, who I started in the business with, so we kind of do what we support him, what he has going on with his vision of his mobile barbershop is uh, quite extraordinary. This my Playboy friend. This my Playboy friend. This is my Playboy friend right here. Chuck Luck. Yo. Tell him who you is, Chuck. 
Chuck. Mr. 24 Hour Man. I am the 24 Hour Man in the flesh. And, uh, you know, I'm just here to support my man. You know what I'm saying? This right here is a great thing. You know, we're taking the barber thing to the next level. 24 hour empire. Hey, TJ. Tell me where you're from, my main man. I'm from Africa, my man. <laughs> this is That's TJ Barber. Yeah. yeah. The international. <laughs> Celebrity Baba in the ATL. You know, Concha comes We're taking the game to the next level. That's how we are right now. That's how we are operating. Hey, shut us out. Tell them where you're from. I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> Africa. From the motherland. Yeah. Motherland. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, that's how we do it, man. Let them know, did you run LA? I run every goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Things that's never been done in the United States, 24 hour barbershop. We got an 18 wood. I'm a truck driver myself. This is like my dream vehicle. So, for those who don't know, this is a serious piece of equipment right here. Peterbilt, stretched out. We got three stories up in here, four, four stations. It's crazy. Stupid. You gotta respect the grind. Got to. You gotta respect the grind. Cause if you're trying Man, to be in his lane, there's no use of getting in his lane. He's making it to where there's no competition. Really? If everybody try to run to the same lanes, there's no use. Go f do some painting or something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what it got to take. You know, that's what that's what happened like when you're dealing with urban markets too. Like everybody want to do the same thing. Everybody want to be barbers. Everybody want to be models. Everybody want to be rappers. Everybody want to do hair and all that. You got to create the lane to where you in the lane in this un untouchable lane. And that's what he did. I respect his hustle to the village. Now, and I'm all... The Bulls ain't exactly been blowing people out of the playoffs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but but the, the Bulls haven't been exactly blowing people out of the playoffs either. I mean, they struggled against the Pacers. So after I found out there was a building across the street and it was abandoned, I went over there and asked the man, I said, man, give me a chance. Just give me one chance. I'm going to show you what I can do. But that one chance ended up being seven years. 24 hours, seven days. <coughs> Who slept in the shot with you when you first got it? My kids. You and your brothers and sisters. Because I had to make y'all understand, ain't nobody going to give you nothing out here. You got to get it on your own. Nobody. They talk that good game, but they don't. Once you start believing in yourself, then everybody starts believing in you. You got to prove yourself. So we ran the spot while you were gone. Uh oh. That's a nice lady. Her name was Carol. Sweet lady. She was 100% behind me. 100%. Did she, she ran the way you would have ran it? Well, she did her purpose. She did the thing she needed to do. Yeah. Yeah. She kept the doors open. She listened very well. She did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. She did what a woman's supposed to be doing. She's supposed to be able to maintain while her husband goes through hunting. Yeah. She did that. 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 Not a woman supposed to out hunt a man. Anytime you got a woman out hunt a man, it's a problem. He's not a man. Uh huh. Yeah. Hey, count that yeah. money for me, partner. Yeah. Hey, Ross, make sure that nigga got that shit right, yeah. you hear me? Hey, when that motherfucker go ding, there's a hundred for style. Yeah. That shit should add up to about 5.4. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be right back, man. I'm finna go get dripped. Yeah. Tell me gas up jet. I stay on my grind, could that come first? If he get out of line, his feelings finna get hurt. All this on my mind, it get that dough. 
you try me, I'ma take it places you don't wanna go. 50, 60 stacks of moon when I'm in your town. Just some shake a booty hole, but I did it go down. Yeah, that quick play roll, let her get back fast. And attention when you see me, pledge allegiance to the swag. 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 Chain, play the game, how it go. I ain't in the game, still I'm a problem on the low. What them things? It's all about this. What you believe in, what you think you can do, can't worry about what nobody else talking about. Uh, folks I call, I call them dream killers. I ain't gonna let nobody creep, uh, kill my dream. You see this money maker? This something that people be scared to do. They're scared of gas prices. Worry about what everybody, their friend, girlfriend, boyfriend say. You can't, you can't worry about what nobody talk about. You got to fulfill your dream when you get to the destiny. That's why I ain't cut my house 45 in. Let anybody want to be around me, whatever. The ones that suck that I don't want around me, they'll move on. The winner's going to stay behind. That's all I'm looking for. Attract more winners. Winners bring winners. Losers bring losers. I'm not a loser. This is what you call a cold gas truck. Good. Straight from the scratch, ground. Drove all the way from California to Bakersfield, California with no heat. Searched this thing for 12 weeks. So I got what I needed. This is, you gotta have a personal security guard for this right here. Not when you're bold, out of control. All these clowns, you need Bentley's, Ferraris. Get a challenge, see? This thing here take gas, insurance, DOT. It take all that to run this big boy. So I had to make a leap for myself. <laughs> 